So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I turn this into this. Now, this is part of my garden renovation series. So if you'd like to see any of the previous parts, such as when I built the sleeper wall, when I laid the patio, when I leveled the clay soil, feel free to click on the links below or head over to my channel and subscribe if you wanna see any more. Now, the big issue with my previous lawn was it was very clay heavy. When we first moved into the property, we lay turf in the garden and we only had one bulk bag of topsoil to spread across the entire lawn before rolling the turf out. And about two thirds of the garden was left without any topsoil underneath. So we literally just rolled the turf onto the clay that was already there. One of the big issues of this was that there wasn't a lot of organic matter below the grass itself. So we knew that when we came to renovate the garden, we'd have to make sure that we replace a lot of the clay soil with much more topsoil to provide more nutrients and a better growing space for the grass itself. Just after I laid the patio, I dug up the rest of the grass that was in front of the wall. And with this, we took off a good six to 10 inches of clay that we didn't want anymore. And in my previous video, you'll see how I leveled the clay soil using a mattock, chipping away the mattock to get a smooth surface. Now there is a slight incline that goes up towards the retaining wall, but that's just to allow drainage so that water doesn't sit on the surface and create any pools where the turf's gonna be. I knew I needed to water quite a lot of topsoil if I was gonna have a good bed for the grass seed to be sown in. Now I ordered five tons of topsoil, which at first didn't seem like a lot, when I started, it then seemed like a whole lot because it was absolutely backbreaking, lugging all of the topsoil on my own into the garden. But now that it's done, I'm really glad that I've gone with the five tons of topsoil because it's given a good few inches of topsoil there ready for the seed to be sown in. In hindsight, I probably should have taken a few wheelbarrows full of topsoil and raked those in before adding more. I thought that putting a big layer of topsoil down to begin with would be much easier. However, it did become quite challenging when it came to raking it in. Now, I thought the most difficult part would be leveling the soil itself. Now, it was still challenging. However, just taking my time, treading along it, and then coming back and leveling things out and then treading along it again to come back, compact it and then leveling things out again. That seemed to do the trick. And it just, it was a case of slow and steady to get things finished. So after I raked across the first level, compacted it down by walking along it, and raking it out again, I put another layer of topsoil along the surface. The idea is that this would help me to get the smoothest sort of flattest finish that I could get on the day. Looking ahead into the future, sort of towards autumn and next spring, that may be the time when I go with a 70-30 mix of sand and soil. And hopefully then I can start getting a really flat, smooth finish on the surface. But for now, leveling the way I've done this is gonna give me the best finish that I can hope for today. So after I raked in the two layers of the topsoil, I went round with a big, large piece of wood and I scraped it along the surface, just looking for any imperfections and inconsistencies. Now, anywhere where there was a dip, I was putting a little bit more topsoil on, raking it in, treading on it to compact it down and raking it over again and trying to get it as flat as possible. This took around about four, four and a half hours all in on the first day. And then by that point, I was absolutely exhausted and had to leave it until the next day to come back and finish leveling the surface. On that second day when I went out, all I did was go around all of those borders where I removed a lot of the stones, I filled in them spaces, I went across the entire lawn with the piece of wood, just checking where the dips were and where I had to fill in those extra spaces with topsoil. You may have noticed as well watching the video that there was a space on the right hand side that I didn't put any topsoil onto. Now in the end, I did end up putting the remaining topsoil over there because there was a little bit that we had left that I needed to put somewhere. Before I forget to mention it, the best tool that I ended up buying for this renovation was the landscaping rake. Now I did buy this back in July when I started the renovation. I hadn't used it since I bought it. However, it was worth its weight in gold when it came to raking out all of the topsoil. I did use the smaller rake that I had for some smaller crevices that I needed to rake the topsoil into. But when it came to actually leveling the surface, the landscaping rake was perfect. One thing I would recommend doing as well is looking at local suppliers when it comes to getting things like topsoil. I spent a lot of time looking online at different places where I could get it and many of the bags are coming out at 130 to 150 pound per 
800 kilogram bag of topsoil. So if you do end up doing a renovation similar to this, get in touch with a local supplier. I end up spending a fraction of what it probably would have cost if I'd have gone out and bought some premium bulk bags of topsoil. Once I'd finished laying all the layers of topsoil and compacting it down, I went round with the landscaping rake and just raked the top layer of the soil just to loosen it slightly. The reason for this is that I was putting down pre-seed fertiliser. Now I got this pre-seed fertiliser from A1 Lawns and it's a 696 mix, which is perfect for establishing new lawns or overseeding and fertilising lawns in the autumn and in the spring. Now in the past I have had comments of people telling me that I need to apply fertiliser and grass seed using a seed spreader. Now this isn't something I own at the moment. I did see one from, I think it was Wix or somewhere like that for £10 this morning and I couldn't really be bothered going out to get one. So instead I just went round and applied it by hand. It does say on the bag that it needs to be around about 35 grams per every square metre. So I measured out four times that and just sort of roughly eyeballed what a two by two metre square space would be. Now it's not perfect by any stretch, but it doesn't have to be completely perfect. At the end of the day, it's a DIY lawn renovation and just by spreading it by hand, it sort of hopefully will do the job that I'm wanting it to do. So if you enjoyed watching this video and you would like to watch more of the renovation, feel free to subscribe below, like the video if you did enjoy it, and thanks for watching.